بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, My dear brothers and sisters, your excellencies, everybody with their own title I, uh, I'm, uh, I, I like to express my salam to you all and uh, just uh, be with you. I feel happy that I am with you. Uh, the subject I want to discuss is how did uh, the waqf came out, came about, and what does it mean, and how does it influence the community development uh, for Muslims, and in fact also for non-Muslims. So the. Uh, Okay, uh, how did it start? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is not the most common thing, but it is the most real thing. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam found that the water is being, drinking water is being distributed at high expenses. So high price. So he asked, why doesn't one of you buy this well and make it free for everybody? So it wasn't really a mosque, and it wasn't really even a school. It was public service. It was drinking water for people. Uh, so the, the first waqf that came in Islam was the waqf of the well of Roma, which was done on, on advice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we want to see what are the meanings, what is the implication of that. Of course, you will find in all writings on waqf that Oh, the Al-Kaaba is the first waqf that came about, uh, and then the uh, mosque of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina is also a waqf and so on. But places of worships were common places for all people. And there is no recorded saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or any recorded text, any known text, of course not in the Quran, not in the Sunnah, and not also by the Sahaba, that the, the Kaaba, Al-Masjid Al-Haram was a waqf. Who said it was a waqf? It was not a waqf really. Later on, we decided to call it a waqf because we thought it is a place of worship and it is common and it is public and it is for everybody. So why not also call it waqf? It was never called waqf and nobody mentioned the idea of waqf in regard to al-Masjid al-Haram, the mosque of Mecca, al-Kaaba and what is around it until many later years after the death of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Again also, Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi in al Medina, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not call it waqf. You know the story that he bought the land and he insisted on buying it and he paid for it from private property, private money of Abu Bakr and uh, he didn't tell him that, oh, we are going to make this waqf. Never mentioned at all. So in reality, the first waqf is the, the well of Roma, which the Prophet wasallam invented the idea of it. And it is definitely unprecedented. This is for the first time in the history of humanity that with the full intention and the full thinking and the full, call it, regulatory system that the, we need a source of water for the city 
and this source of water for the city, the Prophet وسلم, made it as waqf. So he told him, make it for everybody free. Uthman, when he wanted to make it that way, uh, thought that, well, if I, if I make it to everybody, would I also be included myself? And he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam assured him that yes, you will be also included because you are one of the everybody who lives in Medina, so that includes you. What are the implications of this? One, it tells us that the private sector may fail in fulfilling the, uh, the objectives of the community, especially in what we call the uh, public utilities and many public goods, that public goods very often need to be provided by the non-private sector. We need a way. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he could have collected some money for the budget of the government and bought that well from it, but he did not want to do that because he wanted it also to be a third sector, not a governmental sector. So one, it tells us about the potential and possibility of failure of the private sector in fulfilling certain of the community objectives. Two, clearly it was fighting monopoly because the well was monopolized and water, the good drinking water was monopolized by the former owner of that well. So the Prophet وسلم, wanted to break that monopoly and always monopoly cost the society higher prices. The third point also was the well of Roma, of Roma the only source of drinking water in Al Medina? No. There were other sources of drinking water, and people used to drink from some of these other sources, but the water was a bit salty in all other sources, and this is why this well itself was the one that provides good water. So the Prophet وسلم, in his advice did not advise, let's buy a couple of the salty water wells and make them uh, free for everybody. He insisted on this one, breaking monopoly, caring about the health and the welfare of the community, and three, also the uh, declaring the idea that private sector may fail in providing some of the goods for the community. So the idea that this waqf gives us are very, very important ideas. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did that in a very uh, thoughtful manner, I should say. Okay. Now, uh, it is then definitely created at no precedent example. It is a new form of economies uh, where uh, there is a new concept that is incorporated in the life of the community which was not there before that. Of course, the companion uh, peace be on them, carried this to a large extent to the uh, point that uh, Jabir ibn Abdullah reports that when Umar ibn al-Khattab declared the written document of his waqf, which was made at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was then without a document, when he documented it uh, and declared it, 
Jaber reports that there was not a single family that owned any land in Al Madina or around it that did not create a waqf. So everybody started creating a waqf. So the, the scope of the waqf became very, very important and in fact gives us uh, the cornerstone of the social finance in the Islamic economic thinking. Kinds of waqf, traditionally, you, you, we read it in a classical fiqh that it can be religious uh, uh, or uh, private or joint. It, that's a classical way of doing things. I think it's better to look at the kinds of waqf as societal, a waqf for the service of the society, religious, a waqf for religious objectives, mosques and uh, their like cemeteries, charitables that could be essentially for the uh, poor and needy and the like, and that was yani, a lot of waqf were done. And family waqf, which is another form and another kind of birr or righteousness of doing good benevolence, uh, be benevolent to, you, to the family, be benevolent to the future generations of your family or your neighbor's family or any other specific family. Again, that much categorization of the awqaf is not sufficient. I think we need to notice a big difference between a waqf property that provides the service itself and a waqf property who is uh, intended or which is intended to be for investment, not really to provide the service. So we have a, a mosque that mosque building that provides the service of spaces to uh, pray. And we have uh, another property that is intended to be invested and the return of it to be spent on the mosque. We have a university that the, the, the buildings and the land and the laboratories of it, etc., are used for providing education but also that is not sufficient alone. We need beside it properties that are invested to generate income for that university and so on. So we need also to distinguish between two categories of waqf that is the direct use awqaf and the revenue awqaf the awqaf that are meant to create revenue for the objective that is intended by it. In our history, awqaf provided religious facilities, public utilities, and this is something that we partially at least, in most of our places, we kind of forgot that it's no more public utilities provided by the awqaf, public utilities in almost all our countries today are provided by the government uh, or by the private companies. Why not electricity and internet and water and uh, other services be provided by the awqaf? Why should they be provided by governments? The whole idea of the waqf, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, invented the waqf in order to provide public utilities uh, free to people and if not free could also be for a low price a subsidized price by the waqf so the waqf is intended for these kind of services health service education historically was provided by the uh, uh, the awqaf. More than that, we have awqaf for research. In the Islamic history, Muslims invented awqaf that are 
specially and specific for research. In Damascus, we have a wakaf for re pharmaceutical research, that is to research among the herbs, whether planted or wild herbs, and see what kind of these herbs can help for what kind of illnesses or what, what, what kind of medicine that can be produced from these herbs. The waqf for research. So these kind of awqaf need to be revived. We came to know for a long time that uh, waqf is only the place of uh, uh, worship, the mosque, or even for the non-Muslims, their places of worship. But we really need to uh, go beyond that and look at the awqaf that serve the society. Historically, in many places, in all the ancient cities, the awqaf occupied big chunk of all properties that are in the Muslim cities. Ancient cities, Istanbul or Damascus or Algier or uh, Baghdad had a lot of awqaf, definitely not less than 30 to 40 percent of all buildings has been awqaf. Uh, the uh, same thing in, in countryside, etc. The idea of waqf then is fundamental in creating infrastructure for the third sector, for the sector that is not based on uh, profit and not based also on the principle of authority. It is not provided through taxpayers' money. It is not provided by the government, but only through the third sector, and the third sector has advantages in providing many of the services because of the, uh, it is always uh, motivated by the personal zeal of service, by the concept of benevolence, by being kind to others, whether by contributing labor or contributing properties with it. So the idea here is very important as compared with the, uh, the provision for profit or the provision on the basis of government authority. The idea of waqf convinces us or suggests to us very important uh, principles that we are discovering in today's economies and especially after the, the, the fall of the Soviet Union, that a sound economy cannot depend either on the uh, private sector motive of profit or on the public sector authority of uh, government decision making, and a sound economy cannot count on these two pillars alone. These two pillars alone definitely are essential in any economy, but they are not sufficient to create a sound economy. An economy that is balanced, an economy that serves its people in the most appropriate way. We discovered that in order to uh, enhance output, enhance production, to enhance the profit of the private sector, we need at the same time to encourage and promote consumption and to promote consumption that can only be done through a third sector. Cannot be done through the private sector alone. So this is an, an, an idea that we are discovering now and we failed to understand it even 20 years ago. It wasn't there, but now everybody talks about it. A sound economy requires a third sector that encourages and promotes consumption 
in order, if you want to say it that way, in order to promote the productive abilities of the private sector. So to promote that productive ability of the private sector, you need a third sector, a sector that is not motivated by profit, rather a sector that encourages consumption through the non-profit activities and through the non-profit provision. Uh, we came also to, to know through recent studies, in fact, that the, uh, the, to sustain the third sector, you need multi-level of activities in it. One level is not sufficient. So here you have, on one hand, the infrastructure, the awqaf, the properties that give revenues for the nonprofit uh, activities. So uh, this is one, but also you need direct donations. You need direct benevolence, both of time and of income. So you need the, the direct uh, flow of uh, benevolence, and that is where the zakat takes care of that. So the structure that is given in the Islamic system, in fact, in the Islamic economic system, uh, is a structure where the third sector, the non-profit sector, has strong infrastructure, the awqaf, has uh, a, a strong flow, the minimum of which is obligatory, which is the, the, the zakah part, a, a flow of uh, benevolence that is uh, repeated and flowing all the time through the zakah and charity. But here again, the minimum of it is made obligatory. In, in a sense that really, uh, sometimes when you study it, you feel amazed. How come the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the desert of, uh, of Mecca and in that uh, uh, environment, how was he able to invent these ideas? Definitely because he was guided by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It is the guidance of revelation that gave him that and not really definitely his own uh, abilities. It is that what confirms that he, he was really a prophet. It is a miracle to have thought of these things at that time. A sustainable non-profit sector needs permanent strong enhancement. Strong enhancement in the form of encouragement of zakah, uh, of, of charity in general, in the form of creating uh, infrastructure as fixed infrastructure, and in the form also of a minimum requirement of benevolence, of flow from the rich to the poor every uh, period and every year repeatedly. So uh, and to sustain the uh, third sector, we needed all these together. The message of awqaf has been understood by our uh, ancestors that they really built a huge amount of awqaf. They, uh, the, uh, the ummah throughout our history encouraged by the teaching of Islam, it creates a huge amount of awqaf. It diversified the objectives of awqaf in all corners and all economies and all societies. It expanded the concept of awqaf to include all kinds of assets. It is incorrect to think that in our history only uh, real estate were made as awqaf. No, books in fact were made as awqaf. Not only books, even the, the authorship right was made as a waqf. You read it in many of the books that were written by our ancestors that this book, I, I dedicate it for the students of uh, knowledge. And you find this in all these books almost. 
that were written by our ancestors that the books are dedicated for the students of knowledge. What is that other than being really the right of the writer, the right of the author is made as a waqf, even though it is an abstract concept, but yet it is made as uh, waqf. So in all areas, the, the waqf has been expanded. Uh, of course, the most and uh, more prominent feature of waqf is being an act of righteousness, al-birr. Uh, that is the, the, the most dominant. The late Sheikh uh, Mustafa Zarqa argued that this is the only thing that is agreed upon in matters of awqaf. And all other things are opinionated. Many people say that awqaf should be perpetual. Well, yeah, it is okay. It's better to be perpetual, but awqaf can also be temporary. Why not uh, benefiting from the concept of temporal temporality in awqaf? Awqaf can also be temporary in as, as much as they can be uh, perpetual. Through time, through history, awqaf has been accumulating and they, they, they were a, a substantial part of the Muslim economies in our history. They were protected by laws. Yet, we may ask the question, what happened? And this question, in fact, was asked by Imam Malik ibn Anas. What happened to the awqaf of Sahaba? Jabir ibn Abdullah said that almost all the Sahaba created awqaf. And Anas, Malik ibn Anas died in, in the year 175 of Hijra. So it was only 100 years after the companions. He asked that question, what happened to the uh, awqaf of Sahaba at his time, and even at that early time. So what, what was the problem? Why the awqaf of Sahaba disappeared in about 100 years only? That is an important question that we really need to think about, and we really need to invent ideas that Unfortunately, our classical fiqh did not help us providing them yet. So we need to look why that has, has ha happened. Why the awqaf of Sahaba disappeared in less than uh, a hundred years after their, um, I mean, disappearance. It is said that the last companions lived only up to the year 110 after the, uh, of Hijra, which was Anas, uh, the, uh, the disciple, the direct disciple of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who used to serve him and uh, be with him most of the time. So on, on prayer from the Prophet, he lived until the year about 110. So, and yet the, uh, by the time of Malik Ibn Anas, 70 years later, the awqaf of Sahaba no more existed. What is the issue? What is needed now in the awqaf then to, to make the change? Okay? One, we need to think more of the awqaf that help the society, not the awqaf in a sense of uh, mosque only or uh, place of worship or of religious practices alone. So we need societal awqaf. We need to uh, uh, also think of the awqaf as revenue generating awqaf. We need to look at the management of awqaf and improve on it. It's not enough it has been proven historically that uh, we have honest people. 
We need honest people and we need them to be regulated also. Not honesty alone. Honest people but also regulated. So we need regulations for the awqaf that uh, help protect them. Uh, we need to uh, create awqaf for the vulnerable. Special awqaf as were created in the past, we need now special awqaf for the vulnerable, especially for um, microfinance and microinsurance. Uh, we need laws that protect the awqaf. Most of our awqaf laws in the Muslim countries are, are too weak that really do not provide full protection of the awqaf properties. My high school study was in a place that was a waqf, but it was a, a, a hospital, was not a school. At my time, it was used as, as a school, and half of the building was already there because you see, you notice that there are areas that are cut off. That's not the style of building in Damascus. But yet you find areas that were cut off clearly that was stolen by the, uh, the neighbors or most likely by the mutawallis themselves who were uh, managing them. So we need really strong protection by law of the awqaf with uh, a, a strong also uh, recording and registration. Probably the uh, blockchain can help in that, but we need laws, in fact, to, to uh, do that. Uh, one thing that also is important that awqaf will lose value with time but to avoid that, we need the awqaf to always be increasing. So we need to create template forms of awqaf. That is, when we provide these forms to, uh, to the public to make awqaf, we inform them that in these forms, there are special clauses for the growth of awqaf, so that the awqaf will be uh, increasing part of the revenue of the waqf should be always uh, added to its principal so it compensate for depreciation, it compensate for inflation, for the increase of needs, etc. So part of the revenue should be always assigned to increase and this can be done only by creating template forms, forms of uh, the, the awqaf document, the hujjatul waqf. We need to create forms and present them to people so that they, they use these forms, they be aware of the important conditions that should be included into these forms. We need definitely a favorable education system. We need to know about awqaf in our high schools, our students of high schools, in the public schools, they should know something about the awqaf, the importance of the third sector and the importance of the infrastructure of the third sector. With this, I, I think I leave it in, in your hands for further discussion, inshallah, today and tomorrow. And I thank you very much. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you.